I drove to the hospital, went straight to maternity, and they came rushing out and said, you know, how far along are you? And I said, 24 weeks. And they were like, great, that's just viable. My doctor showed up, and she's like, you're not going home anytime soon. My name is Christy. I delivered my son Hugo prematurely at 25 weeks. When I delivered Hugo, he was only one pound, 14 ounces, and 13 inches long. I watched a bunch of people leave the room, and then they loaded me up with anesthesia, and then I was out. I didn't get to see him. I woke up in recovery. I don't know what time it was. I was nervous, but I really wanted to see him. So they wheeled me over, and he was in the first bed, and they had tubes on him, and he was teeny tiny. And that's all I could do was just look at him. <laughs> he was on a, a ventilator because he couldn't breathe because his lungs weren't developed. His skin was transparent and so delicate and thin. He looked like a little baby bird. <laughs> Everything that happened in that NICU room was out of my control and I would be there every single day go in the morning, spend a long time, come home, go back at night and read him a story and just constantly be there with him. And I quickly learned what all the machines were and what they meant. And it's a constant beep and there's a constant noise. And they tell you, well, you want it to be at this number and not at this number. And then as it starts to approach the number you don't want it to be in, then you start to panic, but they don't panic. So it's not about watching him, it's about watching the monitors. Hugo was in the hospital for four months and four days and he had five surgeries while he was in there. I believed that he was gonna make it and I felt like if I could be there every day with him, he would make it and he did. <laughs> When Hugo finally came home, it was easier than I expected, and it was so relaxing. The hardest part was the feeding. I wasn't so concerned about the heart rate monitor, and I wasn't concerned with the oxygen because it was the, the least amount that he needed to be on. I would look at other babies and see the differences as far as the gap goes. It was very apparent, but I didn't let myself think about it. And once he started to hit the mile markers, even though they were delayed, then I started to be more at ease. We go back to the hospital every year on his birthday. And the doctors and the nurses, they've never said to me how bad it was, but I have a feeling in their minds, it was a lot worse than they were ever leading on to me, just by the way that they react when they see him and just, are so shocked at how great he's doing. Anybody that would meet him didn't have any idea of what his story was, and if it came up, they would be completely shocked and surprised because he just is so normal and so bright. One day, he'll hear his story. He's got physical scars on his body that will constantly be a source of conversation for him. When he goes to the beach, um, he's got a nasty scar on his abdomen that people will ask him about. But I already told him, you just say, you got, got in a fight with a shark and you won. 